what's the most significant thing I've learned since seminary that seminary did not teach. Well, maybe it wasn't that seminary did not teach it. Maybe it's just that I did not absorb it. <laughs> I mean, so much of what seminaries try to do is to prepare people for ministry, but often it's like teaching parenting to teenagers, right? It's, it's all true. It just has no perceived relevance until you're actually in the situation. And maybe what I was taught, but I did not gain or take in, was the whole understanding of how the gospel enables our obedience. Even though I think I was taught a lot in seminary about the, the nature of God's commands and the precision with which that was exegeted from the scriptures was so important, I don't think I understood the process of our sanctification, apart from just try harder or become more accountable or follow these means of grace, and by that it means you read the Bible more, you pray more, and you participate in the church more. It's all about what you do. I don't think until actually a decade or more into my ministry did I understand how the gospel actually enables our sanctification, our ability to live for God. All that understanding of what God requires is of course necessary for our sanctification. So the precision with which we look at the text of the Bible and identify what duty or doctrine is here, what should we believe about God, and what should we do in response to what we believe, all that's still there. But if, if all I'm doing is improving my competence or improving my performance, then I become my own savior. I become my own strength. And ultimately, my dependence upon myself becomes the means of my sanctification. The Lord began to work on me as I recognized in my own heart there had to be something more than just willpower that was going to enable me to follow my Savior. Jesus said, John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And that's more than the finger shaking at me and saying, you know, if you really love me, you'll keep my commands. It's actually the dynamic of the human heart that we will do precisely what we love the most. And that means as I begin to understand the process of sanctification in my heart, it's actually the way by which the Spirit is changing my affections so that I will do precisely what I love the most for the one that I love the most. That sanctification is not just about my willpower so that God will be nice to me. It's actually understanding how great is His love for me so that my heart resonates with love for Him. We love because He first loved us. When I understand the grace of the gospel, what's actually happening is there is growing in my heart a surpassing love for my Savior. And there's a consequence. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And the source of that love is in the Bible as well. We are told we love because He first loved us. When, when my heart is filled with love for Christ, it's actually the power of the gospel that's coming into me. Think of it this way. <laughs> the only reason sin has power in our lives is because we're attracted to it. We love it. If the sin did not attract us, it would have absolutely no power. What gives sin power in our lives is our love for it. And the way in which we overcome love for sin is with a greater love. And that means the, the joy of preaching and actually the joy of the Christian life is saying, I'm, I'm not getting God to love me by being better. In fact, because He has loved me infinitely, then what my heart begins to want to do with a greater love for God than love for the sin is to respond in love for Him. The little story I tell is that when I met my wife the, the first time on a, on a picnic, um, it was a beautiful fall day and this, uh, this young woman after a picnic with her family said, would you like to take a walk with me? Now, sky was blue, sun was shining, leaves were turning colors, blonde hair, green eyes, red sweater. She said, would you like to take a walk with me? I said, of course. She's beautiful. Why wouldn't I want to walk with her? And by the way, I've been walking with her for about 40 years now. And the reason for that is I love her. I want to walk with her. The gospel's no different. When we have perceived how great is God's grace toward us, then our hearts respond in love for Him. And when He says, now do you want to walk with me? Our hearts respond, yes, Lord. You tell me how. Because I love you. I want to walk with you. And the love of Christ is the power of the gospel because we want to walk with the one that we love the most. That message makes preaching and teaching and living for Christ our delight as we are strengthened by love of Christ.